So we are going to make an apple crumble today and the, I'm going to start with the crumble first and then we'll do the apples afterwards. Your basic ingredients for a crumble are your sugar, butter, you can use salted or unsalted, we're using unsalted and self-raising flour. You can use plain flour, quite a lot of recipes will call for plain flour. I don't have any in, so we've just got self-raising. But we're also going to add to this some extra little bits in the form of some pumpkin seeds, some cinnamon, and some rolled oats. So we've got quite a lot of things going on with the crumble. So we're gonna start by measuring out 110 grams of self-raising flour. Um, I've got some old manual scales as opposed to digital ones. You can use whichever scales you've got. This is just what I've got. So 110 grams of self-raising flour. It's just past the 100 grams, so that's 110 grams of flour. So that's going to go in. And then into that, we're also going to add 40 grams of our sugar, which is there. And then we'll weigh out 40 grams of cold sugar. It's room temperature sugar. Room temperature sugar, sugar butter is better. Um, as opposed to fresh from the fridge. If you use it fresh from the fridge, you're, you're going to struggle at the next step. So ideally, you want it at room temperature, not too cold. It's just a little past 50, so let me take some of this out. So there we go. That's about 50 grams of sugar. It's a little bit over, but it'll be fine. So in here at the moment is just our flour and our sugar. And I'm going to add, I don't measure my cinnamon, I add to taste. So I'm going to go in with probably about a teaspoon, maybe two, because I like it with a bit of a cinnamon kick. You will be using more cinnamon and more sugar on the apple when we come to that as well. So that's about one to two tablespoon, uh, teaspoons of, sugar, of cinnamon. So I'm just going to start by breaking the sugar up because it's quite lumpy at the moment. And before I add the flour, uh, the butter in, I want to try and get as many of the sugary lumps out as possible so that it's nice and smooth. And I'm just using the rubbing in method where you just pick up a bit of flour and just rub it between your fingers. You can use a blender to do this or a hand mixer or something. I'm quite a traditional baker when it comes to cooking and to baking. I like to use my hands because I can feel then what the flour is doing. And I've got a lot more control over what's happening in the bowl. So this feels quite smooth now, I think I've got most of the lumps out, but to check it what I'm going to do is just give the bowl a little shake and that will push any lumps to the top of the, of the mix. There aren't any lumps in there, so the next thing I'm going to add before I put the butter in is some of our rolled oats. About half a handful there, maybe a little bit more. probably two, maybe three tablespoons of the oats there. And then what I'm going to do is going to take the butter, it's quite a big lump is this, so I'm going to just break this up into little pieces, it'll make it easier for the next step. And this is why if you've got your butter fresh from the fridge, you're going to struggle. It's really better to have this at room temperature because then it's a lot easier to work with. So now what I'm going to do is just go into this and rub this in. So you're going to pick up bits of the flour in the butter and just start rubbing it together. And the whole idea is to incorporate the butter into the flour and to create a crumble-like mix. It's pretty similar to how if you were making a short crust pastry, you would 
you would do it as well. You just don't take it as far as you would if you were doing a short crust pastry. And this is again the other reason why I quite like to use my hands when I'm baking because I can tell then quite easily, quite quickly. I've still got quite a lot of lumps of butter in here. I've got more control over the mixture and what, what it's doing as opposed to if I was using a mixer or a hand blender. And you can see as well that because of the cinnamon and the dark sugar that we're using, the flour has taken on quite a nice brown colour to it. So I think this is nearly there now. There are still some lumps of butter in here. So what I'm going to do now is just give the bowl a little shake just to see how that's looking. And you can see how that's brought quite a few bits of flour, uh, 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 the butter up to the surface. So we've still got quite a few big bits of butter that need working in. And this part of the recipe is quite a simple stage to the recipe that you can find something that you could do maybe with kids if they're wanting to make something like this over the, over the Halloween period and um, with the spices of the cinnamon and the, it's quite a nice winter autumn kind of dessert it's quite nice and warming and cinnamon and apple go really well together so that is roughly as far as I'm going to take this mix it's nice and crumbly it's not too smooth I think I will add some more oats into this just to put some more oats through there and then I'll also add the pumpkin seeds as well. So let me just grab maybe another tablespoon of oats. About two and a half tablespoons of pumpkin seeds there as well. Just give that a quick mix through. I'm not really going to rub this, I'm just literally lifting it and rubbing it through. And that's your crumble for this. That is all you're looking for, is that nice crumbly kind of texture. So that is the crumble part done for the moment. So now we've done the crumble part, so now we're going to prep the apples. I like to do this after we've done the crumble just because apples brown quite quickly. Um, these were just some free apples that a neighbour was giving away. They are cooking apples. Um, some of them are quite big. So they've been peeled and we're just going to cut and core them and then cut them into cubes. That went to the dog. <laughs> These are a bit slippy. <laughs> Don't turn it off. Now this apple, you can see it's got quite a big breeze. Um, which I did try to cut out when I was peeling, but that's not being able to do that. So we're going to just cut it out and that's sorted that out. But that, that's the thing. Sometimes with free apples, you do sometimes find that they've got bruises. So we'll come back once we've got all this prepped and then I'll show you what we do next with the apples. So this is all the apple chopped up and ready to go. So into this, we are going to go in with about teaspoon of cinnamon maybe a little bit more depending on how much of a kick you like if you don't like cinnamon you can do this recipe without the cinnamon just don't put it in the apples don't put it in the crumble and if you don't put cinnamon in the crumble but do it everything else with it you've then got the versatility you could do it with peach and do a peach crumble you could add blackberries to this you could do all kinds of things to different with the crumble if you've not got the cinnamon in there And about a tablespoon of the dark sugar. Get that crumbled in. Get 
all this well mixed. So you want to make sure that as, med as much of the apple, if not all of it, is as covered as possible with the cinnamon and the sugar. But that is the base done. So now we're going to take the crumble and just put this over the top. And then that crumble is then ready to go into the oven. So this has been in the oven at 180 degrees for about 30-35 minutes because I like to make sure it's nice and cooked and ready. So let's get a little bit out just to see what it's like on the inside. And you see the crumble's still nice and crumbly and the fruit is really nice and soft and fully cooked. Oh, it smells amazing. Just get another portion out. My husband so he can try some. Nice and fully cooked through. Old custard to put on this. And there it is. Apple crumble with cinnamon and pumpkin seeds and grapes. That is really nice. Really nice. But that's it.